Wednesday ordeal. Uh, not a whole lot on the agenda today. I just haven't really been playing much. Uh, although there are probably two things I'll do. So I've been, want, I've been meaning to revisit sort of the old school mid-range mob list. Uh, so I gave it a quick update. You know, back in the day, you know, before we had like the double dying wish ramp or Zor, you know, this is this is sort of how you play them off. Um, you know, lots of cheap units with healing and stuff like uh, profit as well to make your bloodborne spell not so punishing. Of course, you know, classic as a herald, and then we're still actually running the Desolator Nakoma package for card advantage and because they're just good. And then more recent additions would be, you know, Sunset Paragon, because it's certainly not a bad card, and it's really good versus Wanderer Chakram, just because it's really good, and also just didn't exist back when I played this deck. I used to run Ethereal Shroud over EMP, but we have enough on our low end, so EMP is a better catch-all and gives us a little bit of a top end. And so basically this deck, it just tries to play a mid-range game, you know, uses Mauve, Bloodborne spell to get early tempo, turning uh, utility minions into reasonably sized threats. And of course, the utility minions still serve their purpose. So you know you can get heals or uh, spell immunity. And then it just tries to control the mid range game early on with just husks. And then it sort of transitions into the late game a little bit just by trying to outlast your opponent with better card advantage tools as well as a few good answers because Dark Transformation is typically looked at as not a great card but it fits Maul because it gives her an unconditional removal and more importantly the Wraithling it leaves behind can get turned into a husk which is sort of a big deal. You know classic AoE uh, staple of Maul of Nasher and then and yeah, it's pretty much the deck. It's just sort of mid-range. I don't know how well it will hold up these days, but it's something I've been meaning to revisit for a while. And I think with the couple small updates I gave it, me mostly uh, Paragon and EMP and Chakram, I think it should hold its own pretty well. And it'll be nice to you know get back to a little bit of a simpler time and get away from Zor, Dying Wish, and the like. Um, my main concern, though, is, you know, it doesn't have a lot of ping, so, like, a proper egg deck could be a little tough on it. Uh, but it holds its own pretty well against anything else, and even then, you know, it's not bad. Like, you know, Nasher, uh, Lure... And EMP do go a long way against that matchup as well. So let's go ahead, pull that out, see where that gets us. Probably should have started with my other list since it's considerably less interesting. Basically, I've just been sort of trying to power through laddering using with the few aggro lists that I don't mind too much, uh, which is the mid-range variant of Starhorn. Up against Moggin. Last I checked, Moggin was playing a proper Dying Wish deck, and he was running the trial, less to run the trial and more just have a 39 or a 38 card deck. And, you know, technically the trial could eventually happen. I don't think he really runs any sacrifice effects other than maybe Ritual in his Bloodborne spell. So let's see here. Uh, a fun open is Prophet and Crypto. So we'll probably go for that. Well, probably don't really need the healing this early on. I do think we're going to want the Sunset Paragon because other than a Shaman play, most of Mob's tools die to Paragon.
Yep, I'm pretty sure this is his signature Dying Wish deck that only pretends to be a Zor list. Yeah, Prophet, Mitigating Malice is an old school classic trick. Next turn we can do Shaman and Crypto, and that will be a massive tempo play. Nasher can probably go, we really do need to try to find ourselves on the Komara Desolator so we don't run out of cards here. Curious, he just wasted Crypto's effect just to develop a board, which there's nothing really truly wrong with. Yeah, this will be a real strong tempo play here. <clears throat> That's a very threatening field. Pretty good hand for me. Mm, why do I want to, want to leave the husk there? Now let's let's bring it back here, just sort of cut off its potential retreat a little bit. Oh man, and we can follow up with another shaman. Yeah, I guess we'll just follow up with yet another shaman. Let's see if we can find something other than the spare crypto. Hmm. Perhaps I should have kept the crypto. Oh well. So let's do a oh, hold on right here. Do it again. Back to sort of keep cornering him a bit and just keep the aggression up here. It's unlikely he's running betrayal, but I do still need to sort of keep it in mind. I guess not really this turn, I could have gone there just fine, but it wasn't a huge difference either way. Yeah, I definitely high rolled a bit with those shaman plays. It's going to be pretty hard pressed to recover. Let's go ahead and throw down a Paragon. That will very nearly finish securing it for us. It's alive with one health. Well, this was a pretty high rolly hand, so... Hard to really say it doesn't say much about the deck, just we drew well. The Necrotic Sphere is a strong possibility, but I don't think Necrotic will save him. Uh, 
well, just committing suicide. But, so now we high rolled. But that is what the deck's supposed to do. It's supposed to. I mean, no, that was about as good a hand as we could have gotten. Let's try that again, because that did not tell us much about the deck, did it? But in theory, it should be able to hold its own versus everything. You know, it has an answer to everything and strong mid range tools. So, hard to say for sure what list we're up against with Cass, because she, both Creep and Aggro still see pretty regular play. Probably don't need this Nasher in this matchup. Okay, well, Healing Mystic, not a fancy opening. Oh, I need to get my skins in this. Well, you know, we're just as usual digging for our Azure Heralds. Uh, we've got our Desolator, so we're not too worried about card advantage. <coughs> Mogul's always good to have. And if she is creeped, you know, we've got to be concerned about Juggernauts. And that looks like it's a fairly strong possibility here. Let's see. Okay, so if it is creep, I'm not too worried about getting... Well... Sometimes you see his play in aggro lists, though, so hard to say for sure. Well, let's let's do it this way. We'll globe deny, finish the ooze off. Heal up and also make the ooze punch the desolator. <clears throat> well, if it is a dedicated creep list, Prophet can briefly stave off and obliterate. Okay, yeah, now we know it's a dedicated creep list. <clears throat> Oh, it's the Cluin variant. Fancy. Alright, well, let's see here. Two, three, four. Yeah, that looks solid enough. So we, we need to be pretty aggressive here. As... Those obliterates are going to be pretty big. I was tempted to, you know, hold off on using the profit to stave off obliterate, but now's just a good turn for it. We need to keep the aggression up to try and be winning before obliterate really becomes an issue. 
which is going to be hard. We're not really a proper aggro list by any stretch. Um, another card I'd like to fit in here is Blood Tear, but not always easy. Ah, he has been drawn pretty well for himself. All right. Hey, Valhalla, thanks for stopping by. Definitely don't need this Macoma. Our hand is a little too full as it is. <clears throat> I think we'll go ahead and... You know, I've got Gob's removal in hand, so we're just going to waste a little bit just to clear that and keep the aggression up here. Shaman's never bad to see. Well, the Desolator, we don't really want to get the health buff, but it doesn't hurt either. We can always just not go for Shaman right away. Hmm. So we could do a Dark Transform, that is an option, would prevent the creep gen. But we're also more concerned about just trying to kill him as fast as possible, and much less concerned about him generating creeps. So let's just go ahead and try and power through here. Try and finish him off as quickly as we can. Keep up the aggression. <clears throat> Given if he does draw some munches though, could be in trouble. I could could regret giving him the opportunity to just continue to generate creep, but oh well. Ah, although profit will come in handy at this point, because we can just wait for when the obliterate would kill us and throw down a profit right before when the obliterate would kill us. That'll let us stick to our just let's go full on aggression here. Hmm. Well, now, now I do need to be concerned about Tormentor, which Seems oh he's running azaleas. Fancy. That's something we weren't very well prepared for. Obliterate we were ready for, but alright, well let's see here. Um, shaman's not helping us at the moment. Yeah, that could be sort of bad. But or Yeah, I guess we're We're just going to uh, let's see, let's put this here to sacrifice to the ooze, and now we just need to. Hmm. Body block as much as we can, but I may have screwed up as this is not what we wanted as a body block, but oh well. Well, let's let's do it this way. Let's give the ooze a chance to punch the desolator as well. That way, we can potentially have a double body block. And he can't can't even ping his way through it. Ah, crap. That's uh, well, no, that's fine. End of turn. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> ah, dang. We were hoping that we'd get the double body block here, but luckily he can't. Well, no, you can still trade with Dark Spine and punish that way. Can't obliterate. Not that he really wants to obliterate me if he's going the Azalea approach, but.
Yeah, it'd be one off lethal even with obliterate. But he can't obliterate this turn because of profit. <clears throat> Nor can he munch. Mm, they are very nearly to obliterate lethal range, but we can likely just desolate or spam to victory at this point. Alright, well, let's see here. Again, that's not really what we need right now. Ah, uh, EMP is never bad to see. Although EMP does give him the opportunity to... have a great munch target, and we want to avoid that. I think we really just want to try to desolate or spam to victory at this point. <coughs> uh, Alright, so let's uh, hide his escape, go ahead and clear that, and then we need to just be focusing on staying alive, because we are Oh, well, I guess if he has Obliterate, we're dead no matter what, unfortunately. I should not have used my Abyssal Scar. That was a that was a mistake. I miscalculated there. Well, there's a chance he doesn't have Obliterate if he's doing the Azalea approach. But that seems unlikely. But, yeah, I should have not used Malice. I made a miscalculation there. If I lose this one, it's almost entirely in my fault. Because Obliterate, if I didn't use... Malice, I would have been in good shape. But I have... Uh, ah, well, now at least I know... Okay. Even if I didn't use Malice, that painful pluck would have done me in either way. Ah, unfortunate. It was a very close game. Uh, ironically, not a great matchup for us, because you know, we're prepared for a lot of things, but Obliterate's not really one of them. And he did draw very well. He... You got to triple a clune those plucks. So we got some crazy generation. Well, let's try that again. It's very close. Uh, I don't think there was anything I could have really done differently that game. Because that last pluck, even if I had another 6 health, I would have still been dead. Um, thanks for stopping by Valhalla. Again, I, there's not much on the agenda today. I'm just messing around with old school mid-range mob and then maybe some aggressive Starhorn. If there's any requests, feel free to get them in because uh, I am not feeling terribly inspired at the moment. All right, well, let's see here. We don't need two Nasher. We probably want to hang on to one for now. We really don't want to open with Shaman because that's a very valuable card that we we will if we need to, but you know, we may not need the Nasher at all here. So let's just not typically play a lot of bodies. I was mostly thinking about keeping it just to help break artifacts, but <clears throat> that's not really our main concern at the moment. Okay, EMP, that's what we're digging for. Okay, so it's a proper... Trial Sage, so EMP is exactly what we wanted to find. Uh, now that we know it's Trial Sage, the chances of obnoxious minions are fairly unlikely. You know, it's unfortunate that we do need to open with our Shaman. Now, technically, we don't have to, but I'm going to. I don't want to waste my turn. Depending on the matchup, sometimes I would prefer to skip a turn rather than play a Shaman, but... It depends. Uh, two pluck. Definitely not what we need. We're going to burn a card if we play Nakoma, but that's alright. This way, eh, no, that doesn't really solve the issue. She can hop up there to nuke it, but oh well. So we're going to burn a card. Hopefully it's not, not one of our desolators. Hmm, interesting. She's not gonna, not gonna go for that clear. She's gonna actually poke. Oh, okay. She had the tracer. At least now we won't burn cards off of Nakoma. 
Although we may actually just have both of these globes and be able to throw down an EMP, which means we're definitely not burning cards off of Nakoma, but... Yeah, I think let's go for that. Let's let's make trial completion awkward. Not ideal, but that will do what we need. More than likely just going to get Blood of Air to Sand Swirl, but we'll see what happens. Yep, there, there it is. And gets the two for one, too. I should have positioned him up. Here. Well, hmm. Uh, could have prevented the two for one. I mean, I I own everything. If I don't, I have more than enough stuff laying around to make whatever I want. I haven't actually really may have played like one game with it, but I'd be happy to give it a shot. It is a really cool list. Yeah, we can go ahead and look at it in a little bit here. Alright, so let's see here. Um, yeah, we really don't need Lure in this matchup. Well, I think we just... Uh, do we... 2, 4, 5... Yeah, let's go ahead and do it that way. So let's... Oh, we lose a point of health doing it this way. I sequenced that wrong, because I want to sacrifice the Herald, not the Mystic, but, ah oh well. We lose one point of health, it's hopefully not the end of the world. Alternatively, I could sacrifice, actually no, we're probably going to sacrifice the Herald next turn, so let's not waste any health. There we go. No health lost, and we can likely just Sacrifice the Herald next turn. <clears throat> oh, clinger, fancy. We may alternatively go for a Nasher, oh, which is a bit of a shame because. Oh, wait, no, I suppose. Just going for Chakram's also a decent option. How to go about this though? So three, four, five. All right, let's do it this way, so we don't lose much of our Chakram here. Don't want this. All right, so trade face. Now we Chakram, bring this up here, ah, I think it's a very fun matchup, like there is a lot you can do to control what Trial Sage does. Hmm. Where to put this? Yeah, let's put it... it doesn't really matter. Let's just keep him... keep his natural mobility restricted. He can't fly out... well, no, no. So nose costs six now, so he can't play it and an artifact this turn. Well, I've always liked Nose. Like, well, it can be a bit of an annoying high rolly deck, unlike the, like, song high artifact variants, you know. Uh, this, this version is very positional focused. Like, you can prevent them from getting to their side, you can box them in, you can spread out units to control the entire board. You know, there's a lot you can actually do. It's all about the positioning uh, in this matchup. Whereas the sister deck of Artifact Songhai is all about them making as positioning as relevant as they can. Don't really need sunset. 
I mean, that's not true. There's usually stuff you can do about it. So a few of the few of the fine points are, so you typically, you know, A, try to prevent them from getting over there. If that doesn't work, you need to, you know, always keep their artifacts down, as well as, oh, just a moment. Um, right, so obviously try to prevent them from getting to the other side. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, but that's fine. You can put them in the position where playing nose is going to be really difficult, and as long as you keep their artifacts trimmed, you're in good shape. But even if they are, they've avoided, you know, they got to the other side, you couldn't box them in, you couldn't keep their artifacts down, you can always just sort of spread your threats in a way across the board that nowhere she can fly to will be safe. <coughs> so... Frenzy is a concern here, but that's why I put the Nakoma outside of the Frenzy range there. Oh, she managed to get two artifacts in one turn. Yeah, that happens. So, it's a little bit a little bit my fault, because as I was just trying to say, uh, you can prevent that a lot by spreading out your forces. But I clumped up a little bit, getting a little overconfident, thinking I would be able to keep her pen down. <clears throat> All right, but now I can start spreading out my forces like I was trying to talk about. Uh, I played into Onk a bit there, that's unfortunate. I could have could have played that around better. And that's why I like this matchup. Like it's all about the positioning factors. can generally play in such a way that flying will not save them. Now unfortunately though, if she has a third artifact, I might just be dead to you know attack spam. But now there is nowhere safe on the board that she can go to. That's not entirely true because she can clear stuff where she goes. I again I could have played this turn this in the last turn a lot better to restrict her options, but I screwed up. I screwed it up trying to talk to you guys about it. Ah, well, there we go. There's my EMP. So if I'm not dead this turn... Oh, will I be alive with one health? It seems unlikely. I'd be surprised if she didn't have a follow-up blood of air or something along those lines. No. There were definitely a few things I could have done better this match. Uh, so, do as I say, not as I do. I'm historically bad at trying to talk through a match and explain concepts and also execute them at the same time. I have to either be quiet... Ah, yep, there it is. Well, she drew well. You know, she, she high-rolled pretty well. And, you know, sometimes that happens, but as you can see, it ended up being a very close match either way. But I survived another turn... EMP would have finished her off, um, and or had I positioned a little bit better, I could have done better. But you know, and yes, the deck can high roll, and that's that's the part I like about it the least. But you know, that's what she did. She got her turn two trial completion, and then she just drew what she needed every turn. You know, she had the blood of air, she had the triple, the uh, quadruple artifacts. Uh, you know, it, it can just high roll, and that sucks, but unlike a lot of decks, e even a high roll Sage, there's still a lot you can do about it. It usually comes down to who can position better. Uh, often, you know, not always, you know, it's if the deck draws well and it's a good player, you know, they can win, but, you know, very often I can position in such a way that them having flying will be terribly useful to them. But... And that match might have been winnable. However, it was it would have been a hard one even if I executed it perfectly. But I think that one was winnable. But I played into Onk a couple times, as well as I didn't spread out my forces as much as I could have. I got too focused on 
boxing her in on that one turn rather than keeping threats elsewhere. But, you know, mostly it came down to she had a nigh perfect hand with turn with uh, two onk, turn two, trial completion, and just drawing enough artifacts and removal each turn to do well. But, you know, I've always sort of defended the deck as. Uh, there's a well. It has a low skill floor. It also has a very high skill ceiling. And I also don't dislike the deck just because of how many positional elements there are on both sides. Uh, the high roll aspect I do dislike. Uh, and I think that's largely in part due to the combination of tracer and Neuralink. You know, being able to run both of those in the same deck, you can get those turn two trial completions awfully easy, very consistently. Uh, Type Maelstrom, I've never been a fan of in the deck. I always felt like it was redundant. Like, you can get your own, like, I'd rather run another artifact rather than Maelstrom. I'd rather just get the, the built in Time Maelstrom going more reliably than have a card that's a dead card a lot of the time, but it's certainly not bad. It can help you get to the other side, it can help you play traditional artifacts, uh, but I, I'm not a fan. I'd rather run <coughs> more control options, more tech and whatnot. All right, well, let's see here. So we're up against Lilith's top deck guru. He's a pretty good player. It's more than likely either Hyper Swarm or Wanderer. Uh, and both of those cases, AoE is what we're looking for here. Uh, EMP is too early for. We're definitely going to want the Nasher and the Chakram. It's a bit early for Nakomas, but we do want to make sure we don't run out of cards here. So I think I'll just toss the EMP, and I'm generally happy with the rest. Okay, yeah, it's Wanderer, yay. <coughs> uh, Alright, so nope, we've... Um, We've got gobs of AoE, which is exactly what we need. We've got a good opening play, and uh, we're just happy with this hand. This is what we need to be seeing. Oh, I need to remember to fix the skins in this deck. But we've got Paragon for Wanderer itself, and then we have Nasher and Chakram for dealing with the swarm. Could go for a Nasher. It's not a bad Nasher. It's not great though. I'm getting a Tombstone is going to be obnoxious. At the same time, the Tombstone could give us an opportunity to abuse Chakram. So I think let's go ahead. And, oh no, I can't. I can't do a Nasher play. I don't, I don't have the mana even with the globe, unfortunately. Now I could do a Paragon, but we really want to save Paragon for Wanderer itself. We'd luck to replace Nakoma, but oh well, that's unfortunate. Hmm. Wonder why he gave up. I mean, he probably just disconnected or had to go. He had a very strong start there. Eh. Oh well, I won't complain about not having to bother with Wanderer because it's it's just never fun. Like Wanderer and Burn, just win or lose, they're never fun matches. Right, well, let's fix the skins in the deck, then we'll get one more round. But so far, it's feeling pretty decent. I, you know, it's, it's consistent, and that, that's what I like. I like a consistent deck. I don't like relying on high rolls and, you know, getting free wins and or getting blown out because you drew poorly or you got hard countered. And so I like this. It's it's consistent. It's good as long as you play. This deck is as strong as the pilot, and that that's what I like. Given it's as strong as the pilot in a fair match, 
If your opponent high rolls, well, that sucks, because a lot of people play high roll decks these days. But, you know, I like this list. It's consistent, it's as strong as the pilot, and the skill, the more skilled of the two players will generally win, barring extreme high rolls. Alright, so let's skin out a bit here. And we'll grab another. Ra oh, wait, actually. Uh, I just don't find anything fun about Wanderer. Like, there's no fancy synergies, there's, there's nothing reliable. It's just, okay, they're going to play Wanderer. We know that's going to happen. It's going to be annoying. And the rest of it's a complete crapshoot. Like, your opponent's also just playing crapshoot. They don't know what they're going to get with one ofs. It's just horrendously inconsistent, other than you know they're just going to be playing stat sticks. And, you know, that's it. It's just, it's a giant crapshoot. Uh, like, the ramp, ramp's the most disgusting crapshoot about it, but that's not the worst part. The worst part is it's nothing but boring stat sticks and just a constant crapshoot of, are they going to draw what they need, and are we just... Or are we just going to get overwhelmed by stats? It's just its just not fun. It's very boring. And it's consistently inconsistent. Like, Wanderer is consistent. Ugh, uh, anyway, enough about, enough about Wanderer. I'm uh, going to try to keep this dream from getting too negative here, but I could go on for ages about all my issues with Wanderer. Uh, suffice to say... I don't enjoy it. I sort of understand. Well, I sort of understand why some people don't mind it, but I am not a fan. All right, so we'll go take a look at uh, Ox Songhai. Uh, now, Kalios is a very, very neat general. He is like everything I love about Songhai. There's a lot of things about Songhai I dislike, like Shidai is the perfect representation of everything I hate about Songhai, and Kalios is the perfect representation of everything I love about Songhai. Uh, but that being said, I haven't played very much Kalios, and he's definitely uh, a fairly high skill general, because you gotta be pretty clever to use him efficiently. But, you know, it's something. Something I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more into. I'm not actually a fan of the Ox portion of the deck. I dislike that he's sort of just RNG Meltdown. Like, he's exactly sort of like Meltdown, but other than Ox's effect itself, I just I love everything about the deck, and I don't mind Ox too much simply because you really do got to work to get him and even if you do get him it's not still a guarantee uh, well, i think my client oh no my client unfroze itself well how about that all right i do have well, i do at least have a rough draft that i started throwing together at some time it probably needs quite a bit more work Let's see here. All right, so the general idea is curve out. So fun fact about Ox, uh, he does actually work with like Thunderhorn and Pergatos's effect. Like both of these effects go off on on Ox. And so generally you just need to play, need to curb out. Uh, Mantella, I think, is really smart, a really smart ox card uh, for a couple reasons. A, it's, it's not a bad card. Like, it's not bad by any means. All right, well, thanks for stopping by, Valhalla. Uh, I guess at this point I am committed all at least... Play a game with it, so if you do watch the VOD later, you can take a look. But so, anyways, so as I was saying, 
All right, so Mantella, it's not a bad card, doesn't make the cut in most lists, but it's certainly not bad. It's got decent stats for its cost, and it provides card advantage. But more importantly, what it does is it gives you a 3-drop that usually gives you a 1-drop. And that's a pretty big deal because, you know, it can 2 for 1 for your trial very frequently, and it lets us not feel bad about only having one one drop in the deck. You know, now we now we effectively have two, but one of them also doubles as our two drop. And because I do, I'm still not sure whether the uh, Kalios variant that runs Jux and Mist Dragon, like, because uh, you have Titan Cow, Titan Ox, or you know, Mist Ox. Um, I'm leaning towards Titan Ox. Not actually because I think it's better. I think they're pretty similar, but simply because I strongly dislike Mist and Jux on principles. So if I can play a deck that is cl almost as good or maybe better without resorting to things I dislike, we'll do that. And since we are skipping mist and jooks that means there's really no sense in running most of the positional cards like backstab or uh, Kalios's usual favorite pick of uh, flame wreath so instead we're just going for you know strong tempo-y mid-range minions so you know or instead of backstab we've just got healing to help us in the aggro matchups uh, instead of Flame Wreath, we're just running, you know, neutral powerhouses like Pagatus and Thunderhorn, which are also actually extremely scary post Ox. And of course, Kron, uh, Kron, because he's just one of the best five drops in the game. I mean, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our other five drop options. Uh, this Hammond's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hammond's okay. And a conjurer is okay. Conjurer can also sort of do the golden mantella trick of giving you different costed minions for one. Uh, and we, perhaps Hammond is something to consider, but I, I think I would just rather have Kron and Paragon than than um, Conjurer. Because while Conjurer is solid, I like with this curve, I don't think we're really going to run into a card advantage issue at all. Not to mention we do sort of have Mantella for card advantage as well. Uh, if anything, I'd like another 8 drop, because how many do we need? 8? No, we need 7. Okay, so... Okay, you know, I think this is the right curve. We need 7 minions, so you know, we'll either get our 1 drop or our 8 drop. <coughs> Uh, Alright, so yeah, Conjurer is another strong contender for the 5 mana slot. Uh, so is Dancing Blades. Dancing Blades is another... Okay, well, I, 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 I take it back. There are some good 5 drop options. Kron, Dancing Blades, and Conjurer are all very good, but I think Kron still stands out as one of the best just because He's, he's a very good card, and more importantly, he's really good at, like, surviving through the Magmar removal package. Like, Kron by himself plays around Rebuke, Plasma, and Natural Selection. Like, by himself, he is immune to being completely dealt with by any... Like, he's out of Natural Selections... Or, he's, he's out of Plasma's range. He is has more health than attack so he's out of rebukes kill range and he even generates his own minion to make himself immune to that select so he's i mean and it's just a good card and paragon uh wall wall conjurer and dancing blades are probably stronger cards in a vacuum. In the meta we have today, Paragon's really good. Uh, he kills Wanderer, he helps deal with Swarm, 
And, you know, there, there are a lot of targets he kills. You know, he kills EMPs. You know, he's just a, he's a good card. And he just, he helps us out a bit more than Conjurer, since we don't really need the card advantage. Or, uh, Dan well, Dancing Blades is another good card. You know, uh, Paragon will typically do at least three damage to something like Dancing Blades, given the body's a whole different world, but... You know, we mostly just need to survive until our trial. I think Painter and Zendo are pretty much... Our, our top end here is pretty much a given. Like, Dagona is definitely the best 8-drop around. Yeah, like, it's like the only option. Yeah, no, Dagona is a really good card. Best 8-drop around. EMP is a given. Painter is a given. Zendo's less of a given than he used to be, but he's still just a great card. And, you know, we've, we've got some big fatties here. You know, Zendo plus Thunderhorn, Zendo plus a fatty is just good all around. Uh, so, you know, that that's my rough draft. Uh, you know, the, the most important things about Ox are having, you know, being mostly minions and having the the curve to be able to play him reliably. But at the same time, you don't want to be too reliant on him. You want to have a strong mid-range package that can win on its own without Ox. And, you know, the reason to play Kalios rather than Shidai or Reba is simply just because, you know, the extra mobility on a lot of our fatties goes a long way. So, I, I think this is Pretty close to optimized. Let's take another quick gander through the cards before we commit. Mm -hmm. uh, Blood Tear is definitely the best one drop, and uh, Golden Mantella is better than running another one drop. For twos, we pretty much want to skip all of the backstab because we can't do this reliably. Tusk Four is an okay option, but the lack of buffs and the fact that we want to be playing a different costed minion every turn means he's really not what we want to be seeing. We don't have spells, so Chakri's out. We don't even want to really look at spells at all. So in the three mana department, Battle Pandas. Uh, without a doubt, the strongest three drops Songhai has. Well, which is one of the best three drops in the game, period. The other options are Sentinel or Key Beholder. Key Beholder is very good. Um, same with. But there are actually a lot of strong three drop options, but Battle Pandos. Battle Pandos a must, and so is Mantella, just because Mantella supports the trial really well, and Battle Pandos too good to skip. And we really don't want to have more than two per mana slot. So while there are a lot of strong contenders, those win out for me, at least in faction. And then there's really no neutral three drops other than Mantella for the reasons we've talked about that we want to see. Now, uh, Repulsor's, Repulsor's an option because, you know, we don't really have a lot of answers. Uh, we've got Painter. We've got EMP, we've got that going over. Those are all really late game. So Repulsor can help you out early on, but again, we just we're playing a proactive list, not a reactive one for the most part. And that's that's pretty much the only other real three drop we want to consider. In the four mana department, uh, we, if this was the Miss Jook's version, Flame Wreath would definitely go in, but because it is not, instead we're just going for those powerhouse neutrals. There's really not a lot of... Uh, Bakazori, again, would probably make the list if we were playing the spell variant, but we are not. Uh, Kron's good, or I mean, uh, Scorn is good, but we already have Battle Pando and Thunderhorn, so we're not too... Worried about AoE. Oh, and Paragon. You know, we're actually pretty well covered on AoE in general. Um, Dio is not bad, but again, the lack of buffs makes the Tombstone not so useful. 
Uh, Lightbender, Lightbender's good, but we do have EMP, so we don't really need that. We really want more proactive options, and I think when it comes to proactive options, Pergatos and Thunderhorn really are our best bet. Although Night Watcher is an interesting option, because uh, it's not a bad card, and you know, we, we don't have any rush, so could be... Uh, I think if Night Watcher is a card I would run in like a side deck, but I wouldn't main board it. Uh, maybe Bender is also good sideboard material. Alright, so moving on to the 5 mana category. Um, right, we already actually did, we already looked at the 5 mana category earlier. Um, Hammond's okay, but nothing spectacular. And the neutral pool, there are some strong contenders mostly uh, conjurer and dancing blades are fierce competition per cron and paragon but these are these are meta picks so we've already talked about the five drop spot quite a bit so on to six mana uh, now we're running both of songhai's options hey alex thanks for stopping by uh, so bone reapers bone reapers not Bone Reaper's solid, but again, you really want buffs to go along with Bone Reaper. Uh, and we've got our AoE covered. If we needed more AoE, uh, I'd consider them, but we don't really. And there aren't a lot of other great... Uh, actually, ooh, Mage Sworn. Uh, again, I don't think Mage Sworn is main board material, because there's just not a whole lot of meta decks these days that are too bothered by him. Yes, he shuts down Bloodborne spells, but he gets answered just too easy these days. So he'd definitely be good sideboard material. But I don't think there are a lot of other real six drop contenders other than Mage Sworn. Yeah, okay, so Mage Sworn's really the only six drop. So seven I don't think he can beat EMP. Uh, well, okay, calligrapher is not a bad option. Like calligrapher is all right. Like if we if we were concerned about card advantage, calligrapher helps. But calligrapher is really cause we really just don't want to be playing spells in this deck. We really want to be playing minions. So calligrapher is just not what we want to be seeing, just because we want to be playing minions. And in the neutral side, EMP is really just where it's at. There just is not another great option like uh saber spines all right yeah pretty much saber spines really the only other option but at this point uh just with how the curve works we prefer just moving on to dagona at that point so uh, yeah no no changes that i can see i want to make other than i put together a little bit of a side deck there so I guess let's go ahead and we'll load it into the client and we'll, oops, uh-oh, what did I do? I don't know what I did. Did I delete something? No. My mouse is breaking. Did it work? Hey, it worked. All right, I'm missing quite a few cards, but hope you're happy, Valhalla. I'm gonna be blowing a lot to make this. Well, that's all right. Hopefully, hopefully he will consider a subscription. Oh, God, what did I need? Jesus. All right, I think I need the Zendos because I got rid of them. I needed. Uh, yeah, well, let's start with the Zendos and the Painters. Mm-hmm. 
Well, client has really been lagging today. I probably just need to restart my poor computer. It's been on for a while. Oh, well, we had a... <laughs> Alright, but before I go and craft the rest of those Zendos, let me go ahead and open some orbs that I've got laying around. <clears throat> Just in case, you know, I happen to open some Zendos or the like. A couple prismatics. Only one legendary in that bunch. Jeez. Well, maybe it was a Zendo or a painter. <laughs> I have my doubts, though. Alright, well, let's go ahead. Disenchant. Hey, Tobot, thanks for stopping by. Well, if I can ever finish disenchanting and building this stuff, we'll move on to a game, but it's sure been taking its time. All right, so we needed to, well, let, let's go through, just take a look at what, we, all right. Uh, prismatics. Ah, there is a prismatic that can go. Okay, so we got a Grandmaster. That was our one legend we pulled from that bunch. That's okay. I think we may just have enough spirit now to make the rest of what we need anyways. Oh, not a metamorphosis? Oh, wait, no, right, I had. I just haven't looked at my cards for a while here. Well, I, I, I think I technically have enough spirit and stuff to just own everything because I still have quite a few of my uh, Twitch drop rewards, uh, no, my, uh, my Artificer Academy rewards, which I've been just sort of hoarding lately uh, since we haven't been getting more Artificer Academy. I haven't quite felt up to giving them away. And mostly I've been just sort of saving for if a new expansion ever comes around. That way, I, instead of just buying the rest of whatever I'm missing, I'm just sort of holding out so I can just buy a whole new expansion if it comes to it. Alright, so back to the task at hand. Let's finish making some Songhai stuff. Alright, so gotta get those Zendos. And then we need the painters. Definitely breaking the bank a little bit here, but that's fine. I mean, I still have like 10,000 gold or something just hanging around. Uh, Alright, well, let's see. What was I missing at this point? Yeah, I guess I do. Alright, fancy Zendos. Now, what are we missing? Ah, battle pandas. Okay, just a couple pandas. Well, I think I may need to blow a little bit of gold. Let's see, where is that? Put us at. Okay, so. Oh, just a couple orbs will get us the spirit we need. Oops. Alright, get out of here. Somebody messaged me.
Uh, just a couple core orbs here, see where that gets us. Uh, let's buy three, just make sure we get enough spirit to... Finish off that battle panda. Oh boy, that was a. I mean, just because I own, like, other than Songhai, I pretty much have complete collections on <laughs> everything, so I just don't really spend my gold because I don't normally need to. <laughs> Uh, I have been playing since the beginning here, and I've also spent an excessive amount of money on the game as well. All right. And... Pando... Come on, client. Wake up. Oops. There we go, yep, three was more than enough to get that last panda hair. Yep. Oh, which I currently still have a big stash of Artificer Academy codes, but until that starts back up, I'm just going to hoard them. Alright, there we go. Dick finished. Okay, hold on. Still can get a couple skins in here. I've got purple EMP. I'm going to vanity this list up. Vanity is important. Ah, I think that is all the skins to be had, unless I just happen to have Kalios. No, I don't. All right, there we go. All right, we're ready to play a game, finally. All right. I think it is first game with Ox. go. Keep that list handy though, since I am not super familiar with it. Okay, so. The deck, the deck needs to pretty aggressively replace every turn to work towards its trial, and we do have some answers to everything. Alright, so we're up against Eilina, so we're definitely looking for our EMPs. So, one EMP to start. Okay, so we're just going to, all right, so Pandos, yeah, we're just looking to curve out. Don't really need these Eternity Painters. Uh, EMP is important in this matchup, A, because it gets rid of stuns, B, more often than not, walls crop up with Vanar, especially Eilina. I don't need this painter. Alright, we are going to curve out pretty well this match. That's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got a lot of... Oh boy, we, are, we almost have our whole trial now. We just need a two drop or an eight drop. Stone. How rude. Uh, 
All right, so we're going to hop up here. Clean that off. And play. Yeah, we don't want the Thunderhorn to get stunned. Oh, right, we're playing Kalios. So we can absolutely afford to play the Thunderhorn nice and defensively. <clears throat> and we are taking the aggressive route because the later the game goes, uh, the harder things will get versus Eilina. Probably don't need the Paragon. Yeah, playing Kalios is interesting because, you know, I've developed a lot of habits, positional habits that just don't really apply to Kalios. Yeah, I think we'll go for Kron. Hmm. Yeah, let's try to just deny this globe. Got Kron out, we're going to pull ice, and keep up the aggression. EMPs I don't really want to replace, but okay, so, uh, yeah, we're still looking for either a 2-drop or an 8-drop. EMPs will help delete walls for us. Uh, he should have traded in with his hearth sister first. Well, perhaps he's leaving it around for a reason? Hard to say. Hmm. Guess we'll clear that because we may as well. And then. I want to peel him away from the globe. I want to deny his access to the globe. Okay, so the only way to really do that is to take a step back. And force him away. That will pull him. I suppose I could have just denied the globe as well. And I probably should have changed that position there so he would have taken that extra three damage. That was not a great turn for me. I, I was I got too focused on that globe and forgot to push the damage, and I should have just thrown Zendo on the globe and called that good. I don't know why I would use EMP there. And there's right, so actually we have our whole trial now. Oh, we got enfeebled again, but this is fine. Alright, so let's see here. So we'll we'll want to play an EMS. Okay, we'll go ahead and so mm, mm, no right for EMP. But what we can do is just hop down here. Play the cron. Well, I don't want to replace EMP, I think we've got to, and then we'll just finish. Well, we'll play the play the Herald and keep beating him up. Mm, should have played the Herald elsewhere, so I could have avoided a Grandmaster a little bit better. But oh well, this is fine. Trial can be completed by EMP, who we are going to uh, there's the Ice Age, so it's a perfect turn for EMP. Now we replace first, get another use out of Kron. 
before that happens, though. And now we go ahead and EMP, which will complete the trial. Clear the board. Mm, I should have pulled him back and used his range, but he also may just be dead this turn regardless. Let's see. So, trade. 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 And we'll get Ox's effect off on the blood tier, which will give us exact lethal. There we go. Gotta say, it's, it is a pretty, pretty fun deck. Now let's grab one more and then maybe we'll move on over to back to mid-range mob. <laughs> Do I have an, a, a Doom Abyss deck? Uh, do I have... Yes, I do have them. Uh, they're not very good, nor am I super keen on playing them right now. Now, so... We can look at the list, but I don't think I'm going to play it on stream unless it's a subscriber request. So, if you really want to see me play Doom, throw that subscription my way and I'll have no choice but to do so. But otherwise, here's here was my where I last left off with a Doom list. Basically, oh, let me check. Well, I hope, I thought he said he didn't want to because I was streaming. Uh, yeah, there is not a great list. Alright, so let's see here. We need to be focusing on curving out. Thunderhorns are actually really good here. Hey Mantis, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Pandos are also really good here, but we really do want to be trying to curve out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, this is where I last left off with my Doom list. What was that? Was that Flash Raptor? Huh, a little bit of a odd and desperate play. We'll play Mantella on the globe, which will hopefully give us a one drop as well. Mm, looks like we're going to burn a card, aren't we? Yeah, Thunderhorn's got to go. I mean, those are things you need to survive. I don't see Priestess being very useful. Like, it's just going to die to removal and not accomplish much for you. The only chance you have of Doom working is being able to squeeze every ounce of control in there you can. And Necropic is amazing. I don't know how you can dislike it. And if you don't run EMP, you're just going to auto-lose to a lot of matchups with this list. Like, you will lose to walls without a competition, you will lose to artifacts, it's going to be bad. Mm. Uh, and then again, you, you got to have AoE, or you're going to lose to Swarm. Like, these are things you just you can't... Now, are there alternative options to uh, Breath? Sure. But... Uh, no, two ofs never feel better. Two ofs are bad. Three X consistency as much as possible. There are very rarely cases where two ofs are better. Um, and void pulses are not a great heal tool. Like 
these are all better heal tools. Like, heals the same, also provides tempo, can heal more and provide tempo. Like, Void Pulse will just eat your hand up and, you know, push a little damage and you don't care about the damage. Like, there are, there are much better heal tools than Void Pulse if you're not playing an aggro list. Void Pulse is an amazing, terrifying card for an aggro list, but it's not good at all for a control list. All right, well, let's see here. Let's get an overall. Let's see. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, it does tell me, so I do need to play a two-drop. I don't think Sunset's going to help me here. Uh, play. Hmm. I think I need to just pull back and I can play around Thunderhorn too easily though. Yeah, Thunderhorn's just not going to get value, so we'll play the Pregados. Just because that's the highest value we can at the moment. The next turn we can do Pando and Mystic. EMP will likely help out in this matchup. Not to mention um, we need the 7 drop. It's playing very defensively. Curious. Uh, okay, Risen, that sort of makes sense. I think we're just going to stick to our plan and play the Battle Panda, because, well, he's going to get some eggs off of it, which will suck. That's okay. Alright, we've played our four drops, so Thunderhorn needs to go. Uh, well, we have, we have played a three drop, but, you know, this is fine. I'll come up here, get our value off of that, uh, keep that off of our face here, a little bit anyways. And then we'll play the Pando, because that's going to be sort of our saving grace here. We need to play him pretty defensively, because we don't want him to get Lava Slashered. All right, Pando, defensively, which we can afford to do thanks to having Blinks available here. Uh, Risen's annoying, but it's typically not too hard to deal with. I very, I very rarely see it too, because it just tends to full day away. All right, so we played one, two, three, four. So now we need five, six, and seven. Battle Panda will hopefully just clear the risens for us if we just need to get. I ah, got the Macanter. That's a shame. And that means we will not get to truly clear the risens. Luckily, though, at least uh, Pregatos is going to survive the Mechanter and continue to do work for us. Fortunately, Risens are pretty hard on us due to running nothing but minions! Let's also position them in a way that I can't just uh, Sunset Paragon them to death. Pro mm. We really don't want to play Crom though, because that's going to spam stuff too much. Well, I think we can continue just largely ignoring these. If we play, okay, we don't want to play Crom. Ah, Blood Tear, that's good to see. Well, not perfect by any stretch. Alright, well, we know we're going to go ahead and punch this and keep getting Gatos crocs off of these eggs. Hmm. 
Oh, this is awkward. Well, let's at least clear one of these. Unfortunately, it's going to probably make more. Uh, well, this is awkward. Uh, got him. Ah. Yeah, probably. That was... EMP is probably the way to go. Although I, I am cons... No, I think EMP will dispel them before they can activate. Ah, oh, what a nice fancy to getty. Alright, this will definitely be a good EMP turn. Hmm, how to go about this though? Do we clear this just to preserve health? Nah, let's let's force him to trade into the Pregados. So hop up here. Hit this again. It'll definitely hurt a little bit, but hopefully we can afford it. Trade in the egg, get another proc, and now we can play the EMP. Yeah, that's a fairly safe body block. And then, alright, played our four. We don't really need another Pregado, so we need to play our five. One, two, three, four. Need to find need to find a six mana, and hopefully the sunset paragon will help clean the field up a bit for us. Oh, there we go. Okay, we have everything we need for our trial now. We just need to focus on not dying here. We can also use the Paragon strategically with our Battle Pando, but that may not also that may also not be wise. Okay, especially if he's just going to clean the field up for us. Oh well, perhaps we'll see what he plays. Well, he didn't play anything for us to Paragon, unfortunately, but we may do that. Now well, let's go ahead and do it anyways. Why not? Clean his field. And we just need to stay far away as safe as possible here. Alright, uh, Terminator Painter will complete our trial for us, and we're openly happy with the rest of our hand here. Oh, Zenda may be even better. Depends on what he plays. Yes, it definitely appears that we're going to be playing a turning painter. The question is, do I want to replace for anything else here? I think this is all just stuff that's a little too good to give up at the moment. So we'll go ahead and turn a painter. And then we'll trade in and drop the ox. Oh, well, that was a. Eh, not a big deal either way, because we can still just clear that here. Drop the ox. Hide in the corner. Far away from the reach of potential egg problems, and we'll call that good. We will likely just be able to kill him off with Zendo and our EMP. Ah, Thunderhorn may be even better. Because Thunderhorn does indeed proc off of Ox 
Fox's effect. But if he doesn't give us anything to, to Thunderhorn, maybe we won't. Yeah, let's 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 go for it. Do we trade stuff in? Yeah, we don't want to just get punished by rebuke, so trade stuff in. And just keep biding our time. We've got Can I show my best abyss list? Sure. Although what is best is a bit of a tricky question, but Alright. Let's see if we can find something something else. Ah, well, more well, Thunderhorns are certainly an option, but I think let's go for the Let's go for the EMP. I don't know if we do Thunder. Nah. Awkward. Now let's go for the EMP. Just so we can finish clearing stuff here. Ah, unfortunate. Oh, well, he's just giving up. Yeah, Ox works. It's very effective. Man, I felt really strong. I mean, I did spend a lot of time optimizing the list, but that's pretty scary. All right, so Abyss. Now, today I was playing with some an old school mid range mob list that was on the agenda today, but it's definitely not my best. Abyssian list. Probably the best Abyssian list I have is proper Dying Wish Mob, which is likely, which there are a few variations of. You have the mid range version, the combo version, or the aggro version. My favorite, well, my favorite's the combo version. But I do think the most reliable is still my mid-range red tide abyss list. Now, can I find it? <laughs> uh, nope. Alright. Uh, dying. Dying and birth. I think this is it. I better go check it in client before I hop into game. Yep, that's the list. You know, basically it's just, it banks on a double ramp, double dying wish ramp package, uh, mixed with strong tempo cards, and a little bit of everything. You know, it's got, it's got Dispel, it's got sort of hard removal, it's got AoE, it's just a really solid all-around list. So we'll grab a game with that, and then maybe we'll go back and revisit the deck I was messing with today, which is just sort of the old school uh, mid-range mob, but definitely is having a bit of trouble keeping up with the meta. But this this list, on the other hand, is not quite meta. Like dying mobs, typically just looked at as a high roll list, but you can build it in ways that it doesn't rely on high roll. If you build it more of the mid-range approach with answers, you don't need to high roll to do well. If you build uh, you know, the aggro variant, yeah, you sort of are reliant on tempo, tempo high rolls, but if you've just got a well-rounded list that's got answers and everything covered, you don't need to high roll. And when you do high roll, it's very scary.
All right, that is way too many desolators. That's exactly what we want to be seeing. Those are our favorite opens. Well, I think we're happy with the rest of our hand here. We've got our favorite turn one, got a great turn two, and we have Shaman as soon as it's available, plus card advantage and Chakra. This is a very solid hand. So we're up against Arjun, which typically means one of two things. You've either got Titan to worry about, although Titan is usually more Brome. So, okay, so Titan is usually Brome. If you're up against Arjun, you're typically more concerned about either a very aggressive tempo list or bond. In the case of tempo, we have pretty similar tempo potential. Uh, because I opened with ramp, I'm a bit more favored. If it is bond, on the other hand, that could be tricky for us, but our Dagonas can really mess up the bond game plan. All right. Don't, he's not being aggressive, which implies he's probably not tempo, so we're just going to go ahead and... Uh, do we globe deny with Dio, or do we protect our face? Let's see. Five drops. Yeah, we don't. We really don't want him to get an early Iron Cliff or anything like that, so let's just deny the globe just so he can't have it. It's a bit awkward for us, because... That means he's going to get, eh, no. We should have just locked our face, because now he's going to get extra work out of that silver guard. But I was a little more concerned about him getting an early uh, iron clip than I was taking a little extra damage from the silver guard. Holy. Otherwise a rude option, which also means we'll can't. Okay, we can. Two, three, four. Yeah, okay, that's the plan. So we'll do that. Bring this down here. Pop this here. Get maximum health on that, and a nice big husk as well, and then next turn we'll have a very, should have a very strong chakra turn. Our health's uncomfortably low, but that's alright. Although if he is playing a bond list, okay, well no, tombstone will keep us safe from bond this turn, and then shortly after we'll be able to answer something like an iron clip Dagona. Now, there's a good chance he is just playing aggressive tempo here, but it's hard to say for sure which which of those he's playing so far. But aggressive tempo, we do have a lot of healing, and we are going to likely out-tempo him if that's the case. In either situation, we sort of need to start get, being conservative with our health and starting to back off. Okay. Now we know. This Sentinel is almost exclusively run in tempo lists. Which means this will likely just be a Chakram turn and then turtling with Tombstone. Because we can't afford to stay next to those. Yep, alright, so Chakram. And then turtle with tombstone. Alright, now I I can pull back. Yeah, let's if I if I group up completely then I play into holy immolation, so we're just going to perfect protect with tombstone. Alternatively I could put it here which will lock him down, but we're less concerned about locking him down and more concerned about perfect protect. Because if I put it here and he dropped an iron cliff behind me, which I'm not expecting now that it appears to be dedicated tempo, but we're just 
playing it safe and making sure we don't fall into that. Although I guess even if he did, we've got the Dagona now. Since we've got our double ramp, we can very comfortably drop Dagona if he does drop any threats. But we're going to hopefully just be able to unload our hand next turn and just rest control of the tempo game. Let's see. 4 8. So he could clear the tombstone if he sacrificed his lion. I'll just go in for a trinity. Can't go wrong there. But that will require him to sacrifice his whole board to clear the tombstone if that's how he wants to do it. Yep, we've just rested control of the tempo, and now that we've got our double ramp off, we're just going to flood the board at this point. Uh, although Apurian's claim is still something we need to be a little concerned about. So we can't group ourselves up too much. I think we'll just go for our Nasher play to clear those. It's hard on our Chakram, but I think it is worthwhile. Just clean that up, and then uh, we can get to safety here. Uh, I think at this point, Tombstone's better trading than my Husk. Husk is more valuable. And then we'll start recuperating a little bit of health with, with Desolator, and we're in pretty good shape now. Like, we shouldn't run out of cards thanks to Desolator, and we still have some very strong options in hand. And there is not a lot he can do right now. Can't clear more than two things with an Aperiums. Our health is beyond any Lionar out of hand burst range. And we're gonna just be able to out temple him at this point. Now, an EMP this turn could even the could even things up, because I'd lose I'd lose a lot if he played EMP this turn. But I can still also answer the EMP with Dagona, which Lionar is going to have a pretty tough time dealing with. Although, again, I suppose that's not true. Imperium's claim is a wonderful catch-all for him. But short of an EMP this turn, I think this is pretty much over for him. Well, Sunbloom definitely goes. Sunbloom and Blood Tear accomplished a similar task to what an EMP would have. So I could go ahead and Dagona, but I think I would rather. Yeah, I don't really want. But Dagona, though. Okay, well, here's an idea. I can just block his retreat. So if I Dagona here, Dagona can reach everywhere but here and here. So if I block these two spots, he can't escape the Dagona very well. So yeah, let's go ahead and go for the Dagona. I'm going to replace the Lure because he definitely does not appear to be playing a bomb list. And since he's dispelled our Desolator, we do need to be looking for another of our card advantage tools, either a Nakoma or a backup Desolator. And 
we're not trading because we want to keep him. Oh, crap. He can still escape Dagona right there. Well, with that in mind, I'm just going to trade in so they don't get cleared by an Imperions or something obnoxious like that. Ah, Lightbender and Dagona is always a fun mix there. Weaponized Dispel. Hopefully he gives me something worth dispelling, though. Yeah, the Tigress is definitely worth dispelling. Hmm, do I do I want to dump my whole hand this time? Hopefully he gives me two things to dispel. Ah, uh, yeah, sort of. Alright, so we're definitely going to play Lightbender. Which will clean Dagona for us. And then we're gonna... Okay, we won't play the Dio. We'll just develop a husk. Is developing a husk the best plan? Yeah, we want to block his escape a little bit at least. Given he can still clear the husk just with a roar on the Tigris, but he's definitely on the back foot now. That carrying collector is a pretty easy replacement at this point, though. <coughs> Curious, he's coming forward. Ah, repulsor. Ah, whatever works. So, now let's go ahead and clean up this because it's obnoxious. We don't want that range or effect getting to go off. So clean that. Clean this. And then we'll play the Dio in his face. Don't think there's any benefit to us using Malice right now, so we just won't. And the lack of uh, Nakomas and Desolators is definitely starting to get to us. Uh, but, uh, of course, he's been finding his card advantage tools no problem. I mean, we did find one Desolator, but one is just unfortunately not quite enough. And I certainly don't want to replace another my back at Dagona, because it's just a good card in general. But we'll see what he plays. If he doesn't put anything out worth using Dagona on, I might consider replacing it, but we will see. Iron Cliff is definitely worth using Dagona on. Hmm. Do I keep the tombstone or do I make a husk? Let's keep the tombstone since we now know he's playing Iron Clips. Tangle him up there. Although, all right, well, let's let's move a little closer here. That way we can potentially finish him off with a Dagona punch in face. Hmm, that is a little tricky though. I do need to be careful with my health because you know, well, it's unlikely he's running Tiger. You know, the classic. Uh, Roar Tiger Holy Immolation is definitely, which could be, which could be nine damage. So I do need to be a little careful of that. Although with that tombstone, I'm not too worried about it. Well, it's a little risky. It's actually a lot risky, but no, okay. Mm. Let's just conserve our health. There's no reason to get reckless. Ah, Nakoma, good. That's what we wanted to be seeing right now.
we will go ahead and uh, use our malice on Nakoma just so we can put out some more things here. Where to put this though? We want to play around Aperions. As much as we can here. Probably should have actually done that a little differently. I should have started trying to sneak it back behind there. Tempting option just to light bender these away. I think we'll hold off on that. I should not have moved Mob up. I, I got too focused on trying to kill him. I could light bender. I could light bender one of them. It's awkward though. Now we'll save. We'll just play a, a naked, naked Nasher here, and we'll save the light bender to clean off that Dagona. Yeah, if he has. Well, if he has claim, he just wins this turn. Boy, <laughs> he drew all three of his trinities. Uh, I'm still looking for another Desolator. Oof, that Emulation could be game. Is it? Yes, it is. Yep. Well, this match was definitely winnable, but I screwed it up by moving Mob in and getting too focused on trying to win rather than play the long-term tempo game. Alright, so that one was absolutely winnable. I just screwed up by throwing Mob in his face for... No real good reason, just because I got greedy and wanted to try and win fast rather than safely. If you're in a winning position, don't get greedy. You don't need to rush to win. If you're going to win by playing it safe. So, entirely my fault that I lost that one. If I had just kept Mauve down in the corner, that could have been a pretty easy game. Oh, the Ox deck did great. I won two games with it. It's really strong. It's really easy to play. Um, it's just it's just a great list all around. I was very happy with it. I played Ox both games. Although Ox was not instrumental into winning, I only got to use his effect like one time. Uh, the first game I got an exact lethal out of just Ox and Blood Tear in the same turn, given I, my opponent was fully surrounded by units with an empty board, so it was over regardless. But And then the other game, the other game I got a little bit more mileage out of Ox because I had to sort of hole up in the corner and spam Thunderhorns to get maximum effect. I can probably revisit it. I hope you'll consider subscribing, because I had to craft like nine legendaries to make that silly list. Uh, but I, I can pull it out again next game, probably in the day with it. Alright, so let's see here. We're up against Kalios, so lures... Well, Lure's bad against Kalios, but I'll sometimes keep it, like, turn one, just be able to kill a Scroll Bandit. Um, I think we're overall pretty happy with this hand. Desolator's good, it's for a card advantage, we've got Ramp. Yeah, no, I think we'll, we will keep this hand. Oh, Chakram's not great here, because Kalios rarely, Kalios will very rarely play into Frenzy, and it's a bit early for Chakram. What do we got? Oh, it's Wanderer Kalios, weird. Well, if it's, since it's Wanderer Kalios, I guess we'll be holding on to both. Dagon is very good versus Wanderer.
Key Beholder, mildly obnoxious, but nothing we can't deal with. Uh, do, we, do we really just want to play Demonic Lure to clear it this turn? Certainly not a bad option. Okay, we don't really need the Dio, although it's not bad. Oh, yeah, let's just go ahead, clear that, deny this globe, and while I don't like playing Shaman without his effect, Wanderer is much less likely to be able to answer it. So that'll set me up for a very strong follow-up with Reaper. Odd seeing Wanderer in Kalios. Typically the thing that makes Wanderer so good is the Bloodborne spells that summon minions, but yeah, whatever works. All right, so we want to clear this. Play Reaper on the globe. Take a step back to clear the mystic. Now get our terrifying shaman play off on both Reaper and the Husk, which will also then clear the Zhou for us, and we're still happy. And now at this point, Lure can go, because Lure is still just not good versus Kavios. Very, very strong open for us. Likely secured the game at this point. Yeah, Harold, yeah, he's just given up. He, there's just not a lot he can do at that point. Uh, like, Azur Shaman is, like, the real backbone of most mob lists. When you get it at the right time, it tends to win games. All right, well, let's grab... One last game with Ox now that Valhalla's back here. He missed the first two, but he may, he may catch the VOD later. But just in case he doesn't, we'll go ahead and grab a game with it, and then we'll call that a day. Yep, definitely weird. He may have just been a new player. I didn't really catch his ribbons. Where is there? Is. Okay, so we're up against uh, Casava, which is typically creep. Okay, so we're, we want Painter more than Zendo, as she tends to play a lot of things we need to transform. And the rest of this we're happy with because the, there's nothing real specific we're looking for to, to counter either aggro or creep, so we're mostly just looking to curve out. And we're curving out nicely. Harold's uh, not the best open, but certainly not bad. And then we can do turn to thunder, and yeah, you no, know, we can curve out, curve out comfortably. Uh, to be mean to our little lolly. Come on now. I mean, listen. I know I was asleep for most of this, but come on. <laughs> I am coming back right now, purely to defend a cute yet creepy character that I have. I don't know. She's been one of my favorites. Since before you, there was Mauve. I didn't know you liked Cassidy. I liked her. She's cute. Then Mauve just came along. And listen, I, her hair's a little too neat for my taste, all in all. But ah. come on. So now we know it is creep proper, but poor bastard just played into Thunderhorn. And hard.
Glove deny, clean his field, push the damage. And that is going to be a hard recovery for him. Just because she uses creeps doesn't mean she's creepy. Uh, Alright, so let's see here. Uh, maybe we'll play Crawl this turn. Let's see. Crawl mm. would be ideal. I like all the Abyss chicks. Mom is just my favorite. Yeah. Is she going to deny my... Oh, Kira, she's going aggressive. Ah, uh, and she let me have the globe too. How kind of her. Now we can toss out a Kron and we'll replace the backup Kron. Again, we want to be looking to curb out and we do want the Sunset Paragon to be able to clear any emergency. You know, pa Paragon cleans... Uh, juggernauts, clacks, and the like. Listen, I have a six for my wisdom score. My my standards of would I trust is not high. All right. Two, four, five. So we're still looking for a one drop and a three drop. Ooh, demonic luring a Kron does not feel good because it's going to keep generating value on the back line. I guess it's better than having it in your face. Not by a lot, though. Tempted to just try and overwhelm him with Kron here. But we do want to curve out if we can. Well, actually, uh, let's see. Have we two? Hmm. Yeah, no, I guess we're just going to not progress the trial this turn because I could try and replace for a redrop but nah I think I'd rather just keep playing up the cron let's see we don't need this Pergados yeah one drop that's good to see yeah she's probably just like haha I got rid of it and then you put another one right back in her face <laughs> and getting rid of it is just not good because it just keeps generating like it summons a flying minion a ranged minion or provoke or frenzy so 50 50 chance of generating backline threats demonic luring a cron does not feel good at all um, and Tella will give us, well, we've got our one drop as well, but we need a three drop, by the way. But it looks like we're probably just going to be uh, winning with Kron soon enough. Yes, I got the Radiohead reference. I just, I, I just get very defensive of my favorites. Uh, I, I do get the reference. Well, see... You told me that somebody was being mean before I came over here and saw the Radiohead reference. Good painter turn. Yeah, we're just ultimately happy with our hand here. I uh, need to place something. Don't want to replace that. Oh, he's just giving up. Yeah. Like, it was pretty much over. Like, that Clax, because I was about to replace, just gets so much value off of those two Krons, and the Clax is going to get transformed, no problem. But yeah, no. Uh, the Ox Calius just feels crazy strong, and it's really not that hard to play. Uh, you know, Calios takes a little bit of getting used to, but not that much. Like, uh, this this particular brand is a lot easier because it's less positional focused than your usual Kalios. Because normally Kalios is all about like abusing flame wreath and backstab and whatnot, but this is just sort of play a normal mid range game, and then occasionally you get to play something defensively or jump a body block. Uh, that being said, there's still a lot of interesting things you can do with this Bloodborne spell. Uh, no, it's just a Really strong list. It's got answers for everything. It's got it curves out nice, and it you know uh, ox really helps secure the late game. And it's just a it's just a rude deck. 
you know as long as you remember to focus on curving out appropriately uh, and you know what to dig for and what matchup like you're usually in pretty good shape uh, especially since as long as you know a couple of the fancy tricks mo I don't really have many of those it's mostly Thunderhorn and Pregatos are the only real fancy parts of the deck and that's because they uh, they proc off of Ox's effect which is super rude and you know again the other thing is uh, Mantella will usually give you both a three and a one drop so it's something to think about when you are replacing stuff but I uh, think that's where we'll call it for today thanks for stopping by everyone I will catch you all next time